We have all been in that situation. It's late at night, you're restless, you cannot put yourself to sleep. You open YouTube or Instagram on your smartphone to wash down your craving for some late night stimulus. A few moments later, you see that the sun is rising up. It's been five hours since you started scrolling. If you did take out the time to notice something common between platforms like YouTube, Facebook and Instagram to name a few, you might have observed that these are a lot like an endless pit, which might be deeper than you may have imagined. My name is Shubham and you are watching Elemental where we talk about the smaller things in tech that make a much bigger impact on the real world. This week's topic is infinite scrolling. But before we get started, let me quickly remind you to subscribe to our channel and hit that bell icon so that you know exactly when we put out our latest videos. Before swiping gestures became popular on smartphones, there was another way of organizing information with the help of pages or pagination. This was particularly useful for really long indices like those on Google and so having pages was really helpful. You wouldn't have to make more than three scrolls before stumbling upon the end of the page. So clearly long lists are not new, but the way in which we scroll these lists have changed since the arrival of mobile interfaces. Due to the narrowness of mobile screens, list items are arranged vertically requiring frequent scrolling. And so came infinite scrolling, an effortless way of surfing the web. Whenever you reach the end of a page, it triggers a refresh response to keep delivering content. Apart from solving the problems we just discussed, it also tends to engage users quickly. It encourages them to stay on the page as there is no apparent end to the content that will appear as the user scroll downwards. It can also provide an overview of a lot of simple visual elements. And we have all witnessed this. It's much simpler than using a mouse because it only requires the muscles inside your thumb and it provides instant gratification by displaying new content every single time. Interestingly, the invention of infinite scrolling came long before the first Android and Apple smartphones in 2005. And that's probably part of the reason why its inventor, as a Raskin, didn't really foresee its implications. As a matter of fact, Infinite Scroll was one of the first products designed to not help a user, but deliberately keep them online for as long as possible. Raskin compares this feature to a study conducted in 2005 that gave users bowls of soups that constantly refilled via a tube underneath the bowl. Participant ate 70% more soup than those with normal bowls and did not even notice. Sure, mixing this infinite scrolling with other forms of engagement, including that slot machine-like notification bubble system, colorful icons, images, and videos keeps users stuck, but at the cost of ethical issues like social media and smartphone addiction. But things get even weirder. You see, having an endless scrolling mechanism ironically tosses the fundamentals of user experience and user interface in the trash. You must have observed this while going through some vertical scrolling websites. When you try to return by tapping on back, you are brought to the top of the previous page. This is called power sticking and is incredibly annoying. You also have to scroll up indefinitely just in case you remember about something interesting on Instagram and forgot to save that post. Apart from this, this plan also backfires when it comes to page views. As we discussed in our search engine episode, which you can find somewhere over here, page views get you money. And on paper, it may seem like increasing your engagement may get you more page views. It doesn't always work that way when it comes to infinite scrolling websites. Oftentimes, when you scroll away from an article on a website, your URL would refresh to the home page, but you would still be scrolling the website and reading its contents. Ergo, your page view wouldn't be counted. That's kind of awkward, isn't it? Then there are a lot of times when the navigation bar, which holds things like hamburger menu and home button, also disappears while scrolling. 
which severely disorients a user. So, what can companies do to make this more reasonable? Well, there are several ways to make it work. First is to give back the users the feeling of control. Progress indicators are an excellent way of doing this. The indicator numbers the item currently being viewed out of the total number of items that tell the users still where they have read. Hybrid scrolling is another way of doing this, in which you have a button to show you more content. This one is used by Google Images. But while all of it looks like technology's fault, it does bring up the existential question of willpower. Yeah, it's partly these websites' fault that they are trying to grab your attention, but ultimately the power of not using these websites to resist them rests in you. You can do things like actually setting a timer when starting an online session. You can also use digital well-being features offered by your smartphone. And while the good old-fashioned way of going cold turkey on social media may seem lucrative, it may benefit you more if you take frequent breaks from it. And that brings us to the end of this episode. Ironically, I have to grab your attention to remind you that new elemental videos come out every Sunday at 1 p.m. So subscribe to our channel. And for all things tech, log on to gadgets360.com.